Lord has prepared for us. Voy a orar y para entrar al, al mensaje que el Señor tiene para nosotros. Father, we just uh, thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing, Lord. We just ask that you continue to guide us by your Spirit, Lord, that we be yielded completely, Lord God, to your will, to your purpose, Lord. That the things that you are, are working on, the things that you are planning for, Señor, te, te, nos rendimos nuestro tiempo, nuestra atención a ti, Señor, que hagas tu deseo en este lugar, que las cosas que tú estás planea, planeando, los que, lo que tú estás trabajando, que se cumpla, that it would, it would be accomplished, Lord God, through our uh, gathering and, and, and seeking you out, por nuestros estar unidos, Señor, buscándote a ti, Señor, que cumplas tus deseos. We pray in Jesus' name, en el nombre de Jesús, te lo pedimos. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I do uh, have the open invitation. If somebody has something to share, si, te, si dejo la invitación abierta, si alguien quiere compartir algo. Um, but I, I am continuing uh, with the message. Pero si estoy continuando con el mensaje. But uh, I am, I am uh, willing or open. Pero si estoy dispuesto, si alguien quiere compartir um, testimonio o algo del Señor. Testimony or something from the Lord. Uh, but I just ask, though, that please be obedient, um, even if it's not to share up here, the Lord might have a word for you to share with somebody, an individual. Uh, please be, be obedient with that. Si les pido que sean obedientes, si el Señor les pide que hablen algo, no tiene que ser aquí adelante, pero si tienen una palabra para alguien aquí, antes de irse, por favor, este, um, den, denle la palabra. Before you leave, make sure you, you share whatever God has put in your heart for somebody. Um, Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to start in, well, I just want to say, uh, so last week, you know, we had a guest speaker. Hallelujah. La semana pasada tuvimos un visitante. Pastor Pete Guzman uh, came and he preached um, about Jabez and about labels. Este Pastor Pete uh, Guzman predicó de, de um, how do you call them, etiquetas? Like that? Etiquetas. Um, Um, de la, de libro de, de hablando de Jabez um, and then also reminder y también para recordarles the week before that en la semana antes de eso el servicio antes de eso el domingo uh, the Sunday service before that uh, we shared here or I preached on um, tradition or obedience este yo prediqué aquí de tra tradición o obediencia and we, we spoke about, about King Saul hablamos de Rey Saúl And uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna speak about him some more. Again, I kind of continue uh, with, with what the Lord was, was ministering then. Vamos a continuar un poco con lo que hablamos en, en ese, en ese uh, servicio. Vamos a hablar de Rey Saúl otra vez. Um, de continuando un poco de tradición y obediencia. It's some, somewhat connected to the tradition and obedience. Um, But, um, but, but I believe the Lord is, is, is working it all together. Pero yo, yo, yo miro que el Señor está trabajando todo eso, um, including last week's message and, and what he did for us in, with those labels and that deliverance um, that occurred. Este, incluyendo lo que pasó la semana pasada con ese mensaje de los etiquetas y la, el, la liberación que trajo el Señor. Um, and I believe he'll continue with us this week. Yo siento que va a continuar. Um, And whatever the Lord is ministering to you individually, lo que el Señor se está ministrando a ti individualmente, um, you know, um, between services, <laughs> entre medio de los servicios, um, God is working, el Señor está trabajando. Amen. Um, and I do want to remind, uh, it's a note on my, it didn't have anything to do with the message, I don't think, it, it, no tiene que ver con el mensaje que yo sepa, but it was on my notes last time and it's on my notes again, pero estaban mis notas antes y están en mis notas otra vez. It says, the altar is a place of death. El altar es el lugar de muerte. Right? And so, again, it's here. Aquí está. Um, but, I, but I know that it's a revelation that the Lord showed me. Es una revelación que el Señor me enseñó. Because to me, the altar was a place of worship. Or that's how I saw I saw the altar as a place of being in God's presence. Para mí, yo pensaba del altar como un, un lugar de estar en la presencia de Dios. Un lugar de estar alabando and, and you know, like sunshine and... and um, Um, flowers and things like that. Como este, el, el sunshine, el sol brillando, flores, y así era el altar. That's how, what I thought of when I would think of the altar. But the Lord was showing me that the altar is a place of death. Pero el altar es un lugar de muerte. It is a place where animals were brought 
and they were killed in a very um, violent way. Era un lugar era donde traían los animales y los, los mataban bien con mucha violencia. And that was a reflection of the cross. Y era un refle reflejo de, de la cruz. And what Jesus went through y lo que experimentó Jesús. But it's also a place where we bring things to die. Pero es donde nosotros traemos cosas para que se mueran. Right? Things that, that need to be um, uprooted. Hay cosas que se tienen que salir de raíces. And so we bring them to the altar. So lo traemos al altar. So that through that, por, porque por medio de eso, God brings eternal life. Dios nos trae vida eterna. Right? And so, anyway, again, something that's there, algo que está ahí. Um, but let me go ahead and, and uh, um, open up the message. Voy a abrir el mensaje en Jeremiah chapter 3, en Jeremías capítulo 3. Um, Jeremiah chapter 3. Hallelujah. Um, let me put it up here. Thank you, Lord God. Gracias, Señor. Jeremiah 3, and uh, I am going to ask that we stand as I read 1 through 5. Si voy a pedir, si, si, pueden, si se pueden poner de pie para uh, leer de Jeremías 3, 1 al 5. Um, 3, 1 through 5. Hallelujah. I'll try to read it quickly because it's a little bit more than I usually read for opening. Uh, voy a leerlo un pronto porque es un poco más que me gusta leer usualmente para abrir el servicio. Um, I'm going to read it in English all the way through and in Spanish all the way through. Lo voy a leer en inglés toda y después en español todo. Um, Jeremiah 3, uh, 1 through 5. Jeremías 3, de 1 al 5. It says, if a man divorces a woman and she goes and marries someone else, he will not take her back again. For that would surely corrupt the land. But you have prostituted yourself with many lovers. So why are you trying to come back to me, says the Lord. Look, look at the shrines on every hilltop. Is there any place that you have not defiled by your adultery with other gods? You sit like a prostitute beside the road waiting for a customer. You sit alone like a nomad in the desert. You have polluted the land with your prostitution and your wickedness. That's why even the spring rains have failed. For you are a brazen prostitute and completely shameless. Yet you say to me, Father, you have been my guide since my youth. Surely you won't be angry forever. Surely you can, you can forget about it. So you talk. But you keep on doing all the evil that you can. Hallelujah. It says, dice, si un hombre se divorcia de su esposa y ella se casa con otro, él nunca la recibirá de nuevo porque eso sin duda corrompería la tierra. Pero tú te has prostituido con muchos amantes entonces. Porque tratas de, ¿por qué tratas de volver a mí? Dice el Señor. Fíjate en los santuarios que hay en cada cumbre. ¿Hay algún lugar que no ha sido profanado, profanado por tu adulterio con otros dioses? ¿Te sientas junto al camino como una prostituta en espera de un cliente? ¿Te sientas sola como un nomada en el desierto? ¿Contaminaste la tierra con tu prostitución y te perversidad y tu perversidad por eso incluso han faltado las lluvias de primavera pues eres una prostituta descarada y totalmente desvergonzada aún así me dices padre tú has sido mi guía desde mi juventud seguro que no estarás enojado para siempre sin duda puedes olvidar lo que he hecho hablas de esta manera Pero sigues haciendo todo el mal posible. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just surrender to you, Lord God, at this time. Nos rendimos a ti este, este 
tiempo, Señor, that as that you speak to our hearts, que nos hables a nuestros corazones, that we may see your goodness para ver tu, tu bondad and, and to uh, know your mercy and your grace para reconocer tu misericordia y tu gracia, that in all things you be exalted, que en todas cosas tú seas exaltado, and that our hearts be truly surrendered to you, y que nuestros corazones sean realmente rendidos a ti. En el nombre de Jesús, in Jesus' name, amen. We may be seated. Amen. Se pueden sentar. Um, and so, so this is, a, you know, definitely a hard word. Si, si es un, una palabra difícil o dura, una palabra dura, as far as uh, confronting um, areas of the heart or even, you know, um, individuals. Este, confrontando a, puede ser áreas de la corazón, del corazón o a lo mejor individuales, right? There are people that have grown up, it says, um, Father, you have been my guide since my youth, meaning that we've grown up around the things of God. Este dice que desde, desde niños chiquitos, hemos, uh, tú has sido mi guía, uh, hablando que hay muchos que han crecido en la iglesia. But it's saying that our, um, to, and, and it's very graphic, it, si, si, este, habla con las palabras bien, bien fuertes, um, but it's referring to seeking things other than God. Pero lo que se refiere es buscar a cosas que no son Dios. And we're all guilty of that. So, todos somos culpables de eso. Right? And so some of these words are hard to, to um, apply. En veces es difícil para aplicarlos because we know that, that we're not always that bad. <laughs> Porque decimos, pues no, soy, no siempre estoy tan, tan, este, tan mal. Um, but if we can recognize areas that need attention, pero si podemos reconocer esas áreas que necesitan esa atención, then God is able to do great things. Entonces Dios puede hacer cosas grandes. Right? So uh, I just say to, to be open to what the Lord has. Nomás les digo para estar abiertos a, para lo que el Señor tiene. Um, and I'm going to continue here in Jeremiah. Voy a continuar aquí en Jeremías. Um, keep, I'm going to keep reading. Voy a continuar de leer. But I will share that the title of the message, pero sí quiero compartir el título del mensaje, uh, for this, um, this message is, God's will, my way. Es la voluntad de Dios a mi manera. Right? And, and before I go on with it, because I'm going to explain, I mean, that's what the message is going to explain, este, antes de, de, de continuar, porque el mensaje lo va a explicar, but just in case anybody just hears that and that's it, <laughs> pero por si acaso alguien nomás oye eso y todo, todo es, let me just say that there is, that that's not the way it works. Así no trabaja. God's will, my way, is not how it works. La voluntad de Dios, a mi manera, no es como trabaja. Right? It's God's will, His way. Es la voluntad de Dios de su manera. That's the only way that it works. Es la única manera que va a trabajar. Right? So just in case anybody just heard that and for whatever reason, whether online or whatever, I don't want to, uh, I don't want people to think, oh, okay, good, we can do God's will but our own way. No quiero que nadie piense, ah, qué bueno, yo puedo hacer la voluntad de Dios pero de mi manera. Um, it, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Desfortunadamente no trabaja así. Um, but that's what we're going to talk about today. But, but this is what we're going to talk about Jeremiah uh, 3, I'm going to um, go to verse 6. Um, Jeremiah 3, yendo a verso 6. So just continuing where we were, nomás continuando, continuando donde estábamos. It says, um, During the reign of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, right, to Jeremiah, um, Have you seen... You know what, for the sake of time, I'm just going to read it in English. Para el tiempo, nomás lo voy a leer en inglés. So if anybody's following in Spanish, just read along. I will have it up here. Si lo voy a tener aquí en español, pero para el tiempo, porque si hay bastantes escrituras que voy a leer, nomás lo voy a leer en inglés, pero pueden seguirme en español y yo les digo dónde voy. And I'll let you know which verse I'm on. Um, but... Like they continue in verse 6. During the reign of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, Have you seen what fickle Israel, right? This is God's people. What fickle Israel has done. Like a wife who commits adultery, Israel has worshipped other gods on every hill and under every green tree. Verso 7. Verse 7. I thought 
After she has done all this, she will return to me. But she did not return. And her faithless sister Judah saw this. Right? So this is also God's people, but these are those that are observing what Israel did. Estas son la gente de Dios, pero están viendo lo que hizo uh, Israel. She saw that I divorced faithless Israel because of her adultery, but that treacherous, treacherous sister Judah had no fear. And now she too has left me and given herself to prostitution. Right? And I know that the words are hard, sé que las palabras son duras, but this prostitution is talking about seeking other gods. Esta palabra de, de prostituta habla de estar buscando otros dioses, worshiping things other than God, dando adoración a cosas que no son Dios. Um, where am I? Verse 9. Verso 9. Israel treated it all so lightly. She thought nothing of committing adultery by worshiping idols made of wood and stone. So now the land has been polluted. Verso 10. But despite all this, her faithless sister Judah has never sincerely returned to me. She has only pretended to be sorry. I, the Lord, have spoken. And that's the, that's the verse. I'll, I'll read that one in Spanish. Si voy a leer eso en español. Verso 10. Sin embargo, a pesar de esto, su infiel hermana Judá nunca me, vuel, me ha vuelto, nunca ha vuelto a mí de corazón. Solo fingió estar apen, apenada. Y el Señor, yo, yo, yo el Señor he hablado. And so it says, she has only pretended to be sorry. And, and some translations uh, say that she has repented in pretense only. Dice que se ha arrepentido, pero um, no verdaderamente, no de corazón. And, and that's what we want to, to highlight today. Eso es lo que queremos poner enfoque en eso. That there is a repentance that we experience. Que si, si hay arrepentimiento que experimentamos. But it is a, a outward demonstration. Pero es, 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 una, es una muestra exterior que hacemos. Que mostramos um, palabras y hasta sentimos ese arrepentimiento. We... we we say the words and we even feel the emotions of, of a repentance. Um, and we do it at the altar. Hallelujah. Oh, man, Lord. Um, um, conviction um, to myself. Um, that's why, that's why, as the Lord is telling me now, that's why the altar to me was a place of worship. Hallelujah. Okay, I get it now, Lord. Um, so the altar to me has always been a place of a place of worship, a place of experiencing the, the presence of God. Para mí el altar siempre yo sin sin decirlo, without saying it, I just thought it. No más lo pensaba. De, era un lugar de estar en la presencia, de sentir a, a Dios que este bueno sentir la presencia de Dios. To, to go and feel the presence of God. And so the Lord is saying, that's what's wrong. Eso es lo que está equivocado, eso es lo que está mal, is that the altar is not a place of coming and being in His presence. Que el altar no es un lugar. The sanctuary is, el santuario sí es, but the altar is not. Pero el altar no es. The altar is a place of death. El altar es un lugar de muerte. It is a place that our flesh is going to grieve what we're laying down before the Lord. Es un lugar donde nuestros, nuestra carne va a estar... Um, grieve. How do you say grieve? Um, va a estar... Um, como llorando. Porque, porque se murió parte de nosotros. Afligido. ¿Afligido? No. Um, este... No, ya. Yeah, yeah. um, Porque el, el, el propósito, uh, como debe de ser, the, the, the purpose of the way it should be, is that our experience at the altar, es nuestra experiencia al altar, should result in a change. 
debe de resultar en un cambio. Right? And there should be things that are never the same after that. Y hay cosas que nunca van a ser igual después de eso. Now, I will say, um, not to, to make excuses, but, but I do believe, you know, I, I have peace from God to say, si sí siento, no para hacer excusas, pero si sí siento la paz de Dios para decir, that sometimes we can, we can stumble, and we can um, have errors in our, with, within the repentance. En veces si sí, no, este, hay fallas, y en veces si sí, no, este, podemos tener errores, Dentro de nuestro este arrepentimiento. But there is a grief. There is a, a sorrow inside of us when it happens. Pero hay una aflic aflicción dentro de nosotros cuando pasa. In other words, we lay a sin down or we, we confess, we repent before the Lord something to Him. En otras maneras, este... Um, nos arrepentimos de, de, de un pecado o de algo y, y lo dejamos a los pies de Dios and then we we may stumble y a lo mejor nos nos este nos trompezamos and, and, and we and we we fail y, 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 y fallamos but there is a grief but there is a hurt there is a, there is a, a a a recognition that this isn't my nature, this isn't who I am anymore. Hay un reconocimiento que este ya no es mi naturaleza, ya no soy esta persona, right? And so, so that, that, that doesn't mean that the repentance was, was invalid. No, eso no quiere decir que el arrepentimiento no era válido. Um, it, it, it just means that we still need God. <laughs> Nomás eso nos indica que todavía necesitamos a Dios. So that's not exactly what we're referring to as far as with Judah and Israel. So eso no es exacto lo que estamos refiriendo aquí con Judah y Israel. This is about this time of repentance. Este se trata de un tiempo de arrepentimiento where we are just like so taken by the presence of God. Estamos tan este, eh, em, llevados por la presencia de Dios that we're, we're just saying Things. Que no estamos diciendo cosas. Lord, take everything from me. You have all. I surrender every little area that nothing is left of the flesh and it all be of the Spirit. Decimos cosas que nomás porque estamos bien emocionados y Señor, te doy toda cada área, ningún, que no haya ningún pecado en mi vida, que todo sea santo en tu nombre. That everything be holy and, and purified in your name. And so we say these things. So decimos estas cosas. And it's not bad to be caught up. And the emotion, no es malo para ser um, llevados por la emoción. I know that there's ministers, there's people that are against it. Yo sé que si hay gente que hablan contra las emociones, hay people that talk against emotions. I don't think that emotions are evil. Yo no pienso que las emociones son malas. But when we take the emotion in place of the Holy Spirit, that's evil. Pero cuando tomamos la emoción en lugar del Espíritu Santo, eso sí es mal. Um, but 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 being emotional within the spirit that's that's that that's valid. Pero teniendo esa emoción entre medio del espíritu eso sí es válido. Um, but but thinking that that emotion is true repentance is error. Pero pensando que esa emoción que sentimos es arrepentimiento verdadero eso sí es error. Right? It's not a bad thing. No es algo malo to be that, you know, taken by the Spirit. No es malo de ser llevado por el Espíritu. But repentance, true repentance, pero arrepentimiento, arrepentimiento real, it, it produces change. Eso causa un cambio. And, and, and the, the truth is that, that in the heart, realmente en el corazón, um, true repentance, um, we're, we're never the same again. Arrepentimiento um, verdadero en el corazón nunca somos igual. We may still struggle. A lo mejor batallamos. We may still, you know, to others they might not see it. A lo mejor otros no lo pueden ver. But, but there will be a, a battle in the heart. Pero va a haber una batalla en el corazón. And if we surrender to the Lord, si lo rendimos al Señor, the Lord will have his victory. In, in our hearts. Si nos rendimos al Señor, el Señor va a tener victoria en nuestros corazones. But, but we need to understand that because the enemy is going to come and say, 
It wasn't real. Porque tenemos que entender eso porque el enemigo va a venir y decir, no era real. You were just faking it. Nomás estabas um, pretendiendo. Pretendiendo. Um, pretendiendo. Um, and, and, we, and we'll believe it. Y, no vamos, y, y podemos creernos. Because oh, I, I wouldn't have failed. Porque no, no hubiera fallado. Or I wouldn't have been tempted. O no hubiera sido temp tentado. We need to not accept what the enemy says. Debemos de no aceptar lo que dice el enemigo. And we need to hang on to the cross. And what Jesus did. And his righteousness. And his faithfulness. Tenemos que detenernos fuertes de la cruz. De lo que Jesús hizo. De su sacrificio. De su justicia. That's our, our hope. Esa es nuestra esperanza. Not our willpower. Mm. Not our ability to do better. Amen. No se trata de, de nuestra poder de voluntad. O nuestra habilidad de ser mejor. Or our discipline or maturity. O nuestra disciplina o madurez. It doesn't have anything to do with any of that. No tiene nada que ver con nada de eso. It has to do with Jesus and what he did on the cross and our surrender to him. Se trata de Jesucristo y lo que él hizo en la cruz y nuestro rendir a él. Amen. And so, uh, let's go to Matthew 15. Vamos a Mateo 15. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Gracias, Señor. Matthew 15, um, 7 through 9. Mateo um, 15, de 7 a 9. It's a, and so this is Jesus talking. This is Jesus que está hablando. It says, You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, These people, they, the, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce. For they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. Dice, hipócritas. Dice, ya tenía razón cuando profetizó acerca de ustedes porque escribió, este pueblo me honra con sus labios, pero sus corazones están lejos de mí. Su adoración es una farsa porque enseñan ideas humanas como si fueran mandatos de Dios. And so part of, or one of the things that, that causes us to, to have an outward expression when it's not a, a heart condition, algo que nos causa de tener una expresión que es, que, que es exterior, pero no se trata de un cambio de corazón, is, is when, we, when we follow and trust in man-made commands or man-made traditions. Es cuando seguimos o confiamos en las traducciones o los mandamientos que son hechos del hombre. Right? We can have uh, rules of life. <laughs> Podemos tener reglas de la vida. Things that help us. Cosas que nos ayudan and they're not, que no son malas. They're not bad things. But when we trust in our ability to follow rules. Pero cuando confiamos en nuestra habilidad de seguir las reglas. We're not trusting in the Lord. No estamos confiando en el Señor. We're trusting in ourselves. Mm. Estamos confiando en nosotros mismos. And so, it, it's, so that's a, a warning. So eso es, eso es algo de, 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 de saber que hay peligro, que debemos de, aunque estamos haciendo lo bueno, that even if we're acting or doing the good, we still have a need to go to the feet of Christ. Todavía tenemos la necesidad de ir a los pies de Cristo and receive instruction from Him. Y recibir instrucción de Él. And be obedient and trust in that instruction. Y ser obedientes y, y um, hace, uh, hacer lo que, lo que el Señor nos está diciendo. Um, my wife shared a testimony. Mi, mi esposa um, este, dijo una, un testimonio. And in her testimony, she shared about getting in a car with a stranger. <laughs> en su testimonio, estaba, estaba en el carro con un extranjero, right? Or let him in the car. Lo dejó en el, en el carro. And so we could say, okay, well, that, you know, that she broke a rule, que quebró una regla, right? You're not supposed to do that. No debe de hacer eso. And, and, and we can get caught up in the, the rule and the way things are supposed to go. Podemos uh, 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 
estar envueltos o pensar nomás en las reglas o, o cómo deben de ser las cosas. God sometimes works outside of the rules. En veces el Señor trabaja afuera de las reglas. I'm not saying, you know, do whatever. No estoy diciendo, hagan lo que quieran. But I'm saying that we need to be willing to be obedient to God and trust in Him. Tenemos que estar dispuestos a ser obedientes a Dios y confiar en Él. Um, it doesn't mean that we are careless. No, no, no indica que, vamos a, que no, no nos va a importar o no, no vamos a, a tener cuidado. Sometimes the Lord will tell us to do something. A veces el Señor nos va a decir hacer algo. And we'll recognize that there is danger, there is risk. Los podemos este, saber que hay riesgo. And we can, you know, call somebody. Let them know, hey, I'm about to do this. Uh, just know, <laughs> because, you know, puedes hablarle a alguien. Y dice, ¿sabes qué? Voy a hacer esto porque el Señor me está guiando. No más para que sepas. You know, you, you can take the precautions. Puedes a, a hacer las cosas para, para tener cuidado and be obedient to the Lord. Y ser obedientes al Señor. But the key, or, or the, 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 the purpose, el, el, la clave o el propósito, is to, to be listening to the voice of God, de estar escuchando el, el, la voz de Dios, and to be obedient step by step. Es de ser obediente al Señor paso por paso. Not just, okay, the Lord said this, and run with it. No nomás, oh, okay, el Señor dijo esto, voy a correr con Él. Um, we need to walk in obedience to the Lord step by step. Tenemos que caminar en obediencia al Señor paso por paso. Um, and it says, um, so, so the man-made ideas are, are one of the things that can distract us from obedience to God. Las ideas uh, o los mandamientos del hombre este, nos pueden distraer de ser obedientes a Dios. Um, and then um, in Isaiah 29 and Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29, verse 13. Isaiah 29, 13. It says, And so the Lord says, These people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship is of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote or by, by habit. Um, or by, I'm sorry, by memory. Um, así que el Señor dice, Este pueblo dice que me pertenece, me honra con sus labios, pero sus corazón, su corazón está lejos de mí. Y la adoración que me dirige no es más que reglas humanas aprendidas de memoria. And so there is a routine. Hay una rutina of, of, of righteousness. De, de justicia or of holiness um, de, de, de santidad and, and again these aren't um, so it's not wrong to, to walk righteously no es mal para, traba, para caminar um, justo but it's wrong when our trust is in is it our ability to do that pero es malo cuando nuestra confianza es en nuestra habilidad hacer eso. Um, one of the, 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 the dangers in the church uh, that I've found today, un, un peligro en la iglesia que yo he encontrado en el día de hoy, that I, that I asked the Lord to, to help me with, que yo le pido al Señor que me ayude, is that there, there's, oh, um, I've learned how to serve God. Yo he aprendido cómo servir a Dios by reading his word, by praying, by going to church, by doing a lot of things. Por medio de, de leer la Biblia, orar, ir a la iglesia, haciendo bastantes cosas. And, and trusting in doing those things so much that I don't need to seek God's presence. Yo he aprendido que hay manera de, de confiar tanto en mi rutina cristiana, tanto que no necesito a buscar a la presencia de Dios. That I'm just dependent on that doing these good deeds, these good traditions, these good habits. Yo estoy confiado nomás en haciendo estas tradiciones, estos hábitos buenos, pero no buscar a, a, a la presencia de Dios. But not look for the presence of God. All of this is not bad. Todo esto no es malo. 
But the key is the presence. Pero la clave es la presencia. No I'm talking about an emotional feeling. No estoy hablando de, una, de un sentido emocional. I'm talking about, you know, talking to God, looking for God, wanting to, to speak to and hear from God. Yo estoy hablando de, de buscando a Dios, queriendo de oír de, de Él y hablar con Él. Yeah, it's, it's not about an emotion. No, no se trata de una emoción. Yeah, it's about the will being determined to look for God. Se trata de la voluntad teniendo esa determinación de buscar al Señor. Um, and then in um, um, Ezekiel 33 and Ezekiel 33, um, I'm sorry, 31, Ezekiel, I mean, Ezekiel 33, 31, Ezekiel 33, 31. Capítulo 33, verso 31. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31. It says, So my people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouths are full of lustful words, and their hearts seek only after money. Entonces ellos se acercan fingiendo sinceridad, Y se sientan delante de ti. Escuchan tus palabras, pero no tienen ninguna intención de hacer lo que tú les dices. Tienen la boca llena de palabras sensuales. En su corazón solo buscan dinero. And here, money, yes, it applies to money, but also applies to the things in life that um, the world measures success by. Eso sí se trata del dinero. Pero también se trata de las cosas que el mundo um, mide el éxito um, en la vida. And so there are things that if the, if the people around us, if the world around us, if our parents, our boss or whatever, if they're okay with how we're doing, then we take that as peace with God. Hay muchas veces que si mi, mi jefe está contento, si mi familia está bien, si todas las personas alrededor de mí están contentos conmigo, tomamos eso como estar, tener paz con Dios, o estar bien espiritualmente. That we, we measure our spiritual um, health by the reaction of people around us. Medimos nuestra nuestra salud, nuestra salud espiritual por cómo reaccionan las personas alrededor de nosotros. The problem with that, la problema con eso, is that if God calls us to move against the people around us, and He does that sometimes. La problema con eso es que el Señor nos llama a mover contra lo que están pensando o haciendo las personas alrededor de nosotros, y en veces lo hace. We will, me- we will feel that we've failed if somebody is unhappy with what we did. Vamos a sentir que fallamos a Dios si una persona no, es, no está contento con nosotros. We measure ourselves by the happiness of people around us or, the, or, the, or how happy they are with us. Nos medimos por qué tan contentos están las personas um, con nosotros. Um, but also... The, the, you know, it mentions money, también, it menciona el dinero, which is what, we, we put our trust in our bank account, or our, you know, what's coming in, or, or you know, how, how everything is going to balance out between the bills and the income. Este, ponemos nuestra confianza, nuestra paz está en la cantidad que está en la cuenta de banco o en, en cuánto va a entrar y de contra qué tantos billes vamos, vamos a pagar y nuestra paz está en, en, en eso that our peace is within how our finances are going to balance out nuestra paz está dentro de cómo van a balancear nuestras finanzas sometimes God stretches us en veces Dios nos estira en nuestra fe He stretches our faith and we have moments where our expectations financially, donde nuestras expectativas financiamente, they're not going to line up. No van a estar um, en línea. Not because we're, we're um, doing something wrong or something's wrong. No porque estamos haciendo algo mal, um, but it's because God is wanting to trust in Him. Pero porque Dios quiere que confíenos en Él. He is our provider. 
Él es nuestro proveedor, and we need to see him that way. Tenemos que verlo a él así. Not our employer, not, you know, where, whatever it is that we trust in financially. No nuestro, nuestro employer, nuestro jefe, o nuestro trabajo. El, el trabajo no es nuestro prove, proveedor. El Señor usa el trabajo para proveer a nosotros. God uses our job and our employer to provide for us, but God is the employer. Pero Dios, I mean, God is the, the provider, not the employer, the provider. Pero Dios es el proveedor. And so we need to trust in Him. Tenemos que confiar en Él. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to speed up here because i got a lot to go. Um, so now I want to turn to Saul, right? But we talked about him last time. Si quiero hablar de Saúl, hablamos de él la última vez, or two services ago, hace dos servicios. So I'm not going to go through all of that again. So no voy a seguir por todo eso. I'm going to kind of continue. Hopefully we kind of remember. Uh, espero que si nos acordamos de, de eso, de lo que pasó con Saúl, uh, what happened with Saul. Um, I will read uh, 1 Samuel uh, 10 as a reminder. Si vamos a 1 Samuel 10. Um, para recordarnos, um, he was the, the man appointed as king, era apuntado como rey. Um, en primero de Samuel 10, 9, y 11, 9 a 11, um, 1 Samuel 10, 9 through 11, and again on, on the reading about Samuel, I mean about Saul, I'm going to read just the English. También tengo bastante que leer, so me voy a leer lo, lo, lo de inglés. Uh, en inglés, y pueden seguir en español, you can, you can follow in Spanish. Um, but 1 Samuel 10, 9 through 11, as a reminder, 1 Samuel 10, 9 a 11, como recordarnos. So Saul, so God is going to anoint Saul as king of Israel. Dios va a ungir a Saúl como rey de, de Israel, um, as the first king, como el primer rey, because the people rejected God and, and asked for a king. Porque la gente rechazaron a Dios y pidieron un rey. Um, una persona, a person. And so verse 9 says, verso 9 dice, As Saul turned and started to leave, God gave him a new heart. So this is where God is touching Saul. It says, God gave him a new heart, and all of Samuel's signs were fulfilled that day. When Saul and his servant arrived at Gibeah, they saw a group of prophets coming towards them. Then the Spirit of God came powerfully upon Saul, and he too began to prophesy. When those who, who knew Saul heard about it, they exclaimed, What? Is even Saul a prophet? How did the son of Kish become a prophet? And so, I share this to say, this is how I relate to Saul. Yo comparto esto para decir, así es como yo puedo mirarme en la historia de Saul, because he was touched by God, porque el Señor lo tocó, and it says that his, his heart was changed, and he became a new man. Dice que su corazón fue cambiado, y él se convirtió a un hombre nuevo. And then it says that the Holy Spirit came upon him, and he started to prophesy. Y que el Espíritu Santo vino sobre él, y empezó a, a profetizar. Being, to me, it's like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Para mí es, es igual como el bautismo del Espíritu Santo. Um, and it wasn't that exactly, because that hadn't come yet. No era eso exacto, but it was the same type of experience. Pero el mismo tipo de, de experiencia, where the Spirit changed him. Que el Espíritu lo cambió, and he gave him gifts. Y lo dio dones. Um, and so, Saul becomes king, and he, you know, has um, victories este, uh, um, in battle. And as king, Saul se, se convirtió en el rey de Israel, y tuvo victorias, y tuvo batallas. Y este, también con, con victorias. Um, but then he started to do things um, that made sense to him. He obeyed God's commands, but in a way that made sense to him. Él estaba obedeciendo los mandamientos de Dios, pero de una manera que tenían sentido a él. And this is where he started to fall. This is cuando empezó a caer. And so we read part of it last time. Leímos parte la última vez. This is a different part. Esta es otra parte. In 1 Samuel 15, en 1 de Samuel, uh, capítulo 15, um, 1 Samuel 15, um, I'm going to read, um, no, I'm, I'm going to read the chapter. Voy a leer el capítulo, but I'm going to start in verse, start in verse 1, empezando en verso 1. Um, all right, so, so this is where Saul is already 
uh, starting to show signs of turning from God. This is where Saul is teaching um, signs that he is away from the Lord. Um, 15 one says, uh, One day Samuel said to Saul, It was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people, Israel. Now listen to this message from the Lord. Verse 2. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Verse 3. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. Verse, verse 4. So Saul mobilized his army at Telaim. There were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 men from Judah. Verse 5. Then Saul and his army went to a town of the Amalekites and lay in wait in the valley. Saul sent this warning to the Kenites. Move away from the Amalekites, uh, uh, where the Amalekites live, or you will die with them. For you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up from Egypt. So the Kenites packed up and they left. Verse 7. Verse 7. Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king. But he completely destroyed everyone else. Verse 9. Saul and his men spared Agag's life, and they kept the best of the sheep and goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs. Everything, in fact, that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or of poor quality. Verse 10. Verse 10. Yes. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry that I ever made Saul the king, for he has not been loyal to me, and he has refused to obey my commands. Samuel was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Verso 12. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him Saul went to the town of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Then he went to Gilgal. Verso 13. Then Samuel finally found him. When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's commands. Right? He's... He is rejoicing in his obedience. Él está este, regozándose en su obediencia. 14. Then what is all this bleeding of sheep and goats and, and the lowing of cattle that I hear? Samuel demanded. 15. It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats, cattle, Saul admitted, but they're going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We have destroyed everything else. Then Samuel said to Saul, Stop. Listen to what the Lord told me last night. What did he tell you, Saul asked? And Samuel told him, Although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, Go and completely destroy the sinners the Amalekites, until they are all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? Hallelujah. Verse 20. But I did obey the Lord, Saul insisted. I carried out the mission that he gave me. I brought back King Agag, but I destroyed everyone else. Then my troops brought in the best of the sheep, goats, cattle, and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. And so here Saul is, is, is telling Samuel, Aquí Saul le está diciendo a Samuel, I, I, I heard what God said to do. Yo, yo escuché, yo oí lo que Dios dijo que hacer. And I, and I, and I did what He said. I did what, what, what He meant for me to do. Yo hice lo que, lo que Él deseaba 
que yo hiciera. I, I, I just, I did it in a way that, that, that made more sense. Pero yo lo hice en una manera que tenía más sentido. You know, I saved the king and, and, I, and I brought this, uh, all the goods to sacrifice to God. Yo, yo rescaté el rey y traje esto para hacer sacrificio a Dios. I, I did it my way, but for God's purposes. Yo lo hice de mi manera, pero para los propósitos de Dios. Right? That was his his excuse, right? Ese es su, fue su excusa. But his heart is revealed, pero su corazón está, está revelado, where, where he's building a temple, or not a temple, but a, but a, a statue to himself. Eh, pero su, su, su corazón está revelado donde él está haciendo un, un monumento, a monument to himself. Because he is no longer looking at God as the source of, of, of victory and, and, and purpose. Él ya no está buscando a Dios como el, el donde viene el um, propósito y la victoria. He's looking at himself and, and, and what the people are, are responding to him. Él está viendo a él mismo y como la gente se está respondiendo a él. Right? Um, so he says, he says um, Verse 22, verse 22. Well, Saul says that he did what God said, but he just, you know, did it his own way. Saul says, él hizo lo que Dios le dijo, pero lo hizo a su manera. Verse 22. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your, 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 your joy at the altar, your, 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 your emotions in his presence, or your obedience to his voice. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than, the offering, than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft, and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, He has rejected you as king. Amen. And then verse 24, 24. Then Saul admitted to Samuel, Yes, I have sinned, I have disobeyed your instructions and, and the, Lord, the Lord's command. For I was afraid of the people, and I did what they demanded. But now, please forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel replied, I will not go back with you. Since you have rejected the Lord's command, he has rejected you as king of Israel. And right here is a very important point in Saul's kingdom. Aquí es un punto bien importante en el, en el reino de, de Saúl. Because Samuel is, is letting him face his sin. Porque Samuel lo está dejando que él se esté confrontado por su pecado. And there is a, a, an opportunity for repentance. Aquí hay oportunidad para arrepentimiento. Where Saul can change the course of his kingdom. Donde Saúl puede cambiar... El, 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 para pa donde va su rein, reino um, en Israel, en Israel. But what happens is, pero, pero lo que pasa, verso 27, it says, As Samuel turned to go, Saul tried to hold him back, and he tore the hem of his robe. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today, and has given it to someone else, one who is better than you. And he who is the glory of Israel will not lie, nor will he change his mind, for he is not human that he should change his mind. Then Saul pleaded again, I know I have sinned, but please at least honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel by coming back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel finally agreed and went back with him. And Saul worshipped the Lord. See, and this is where, basically, God 
released him to his own pride. Y aquí es el punto donde el Señor lo dejó y lo permitió que, que estuviera en su orgullo. See, if he had stayed in that place of, of, of knowing that he was wrong with God and that he had to come through repentance back to God. Si él se había quedado en ese lugar donde él sabía que estaba mal con Dios y tenía que regresar a Dios por arrepentimiento by the, the altar, by the death of his self, por el altar, por la muerte del mismo, he would have been able to come back into the graces of God. Podía entrar a regresar a la, a la gracia de Dios. But he didn't. He wanted to worship, not the Lord, but he wanted to worship before the people. Él quería hacer adoración, no al Señor, pero hacer adoración adelante de la gente. That was his, his focus. Ese era su enfoque. Era la gente que lo estaban viendo. The way the people were seeing him. That's what he needed Samuel to help him do. Eso es lo que Sam, quería que Samuel lo ayudara. And when Samuel gave in, y cuando Samuel se rindió, and he said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what you're asking. Cuando Samuel le dijo, está bien, voy a hacer lo que estás diciendo. That was him turning, him, turning him over to his own sin. Él lo estaba dejando ir a su pecado propio. And, and, and like I've mentioned before, como he mencionado antes, this is what terrifies me. Esto es lo que me, me da temor a mí. That we can get to a point in our conscience, in our, in our faith, que podemos llegar a un punto en nuestra conciencia, en nuestra fe, where God just turns us over to our own sin. Donde Dios nos deja a nuestro pecado. Meaning, we, we, like I said, we repent, you know, truthfully, los arrepentimos realmente, and then we, we go and, and we stumble, y vamos y, y este, nos, nos tropezamos, tropezamos o fallamos. We, we fail God. And, and, but, we, but, but it hurts us, pero no, no, nos duele. And so we repent, so nos lo, lo, repentimos. And, and so we're, 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 you know, we're trying, we're, we're, we're seeking God, estamos tratando, estamos buscando a Dios. But, but then, you know, after a while, we start to, to think, you know, it's never going to change. Empezamos a pensar, sabes que nunca voy a cambiar. You know, it's just, I'm just going to, this is just part of who I am, es una parte de, de quien soy. And we start to listen to, and it's just the devil lying. Son, son las mentiras del diablo que nos está diciendo estas cosas. But we start to believe it. We start to listen to it. And God continues to send the Holy Spirit. Y Dios continúa a mandar el Espíritu Santo to convict us, to, to remind us, para, para traer convicción, para recordarnos that God is waiting, that God is there for us, que Dios está esperando, que está ahí para nosotros. But we, we can get to a point, podemos llegar a un punto, that we have... We have ignored the Holy Spirit so much, so many times. Podemos llegar al punto que ignoramos la voz del Espíritu Santo tanto en una área, in a certain area, that we become numb to the Holy Spirit in that area. Que nos hacemos como dormidos. Ya no sentimos el Espíritu Santo en esa área. And, 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 and God will allow that. Y Dios permite eso. And, and, and it isn't until, you know, whether we hear another word or something else comes around that, that may get us to, to revisit that or go back to it. En veces el Señor sí manda a alguien más o una palabra donde, donde visitamos esa ese área de nuevo. But, but we stop hearing the Holy Spirit because we've rejected Him so many times. Pero paramos de oír el Espíritu Santo porque hemos um, rechazado al Espíritu Santo. Um, and that's the point that Saul got to. This is the point that got Saul, where he saw that people were still accepting him, and he was still the king, and he was still functioning, but God and His presence had left him. El miró que todo, todo está, todo, todavía estaba bien. La gente los miraban como rey. Él todavía funcionaba en su, en su papel de rey, pero la presencia de Dios se había alejado de él, um, and he had no idea. Y él no tenía idea. He, he, he knew, but he didn't understand. Él, él sabía, pero no, no entendía. Because his, his perspective or his view wasn't in the godly, but it was in the, in the carnal. 
porque su perspectiva, su manera de ver las cosas, no estaba en lo celestial o en, 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 en lo de Dios, pero en el mundo, en, en lo terrenal. Um, and then, um, so allowing him to worship was the worst thing that could have happened. Permitiéndole que, que adorara era lo, lo peor. That's where the altar became nothing more than a place of emotion. Ese es para, para Saúl, es donde el altar se convirtió a un lugar que nomás era de emoción. But there was no death and there was no change. No había muerte y no hubo cambio. Verse, verse 32, it says, Then Samuel said, Bring King Agag to me. Agag arrived full of hope, for he thought, Surely the worst is over, and I have been spared. But Samuel said, As your sword has killed the sons of many mothers, now your mother will be childish childless and Samuel cut Agag to pieces before the Lord at Gilgal 34 then Samuel went home to Ramah and Saul returned to his house at Gibeah of Saul Samuel never went to meet with Saul again but he mourned constantly for him and the Lord was sorry that he had ever made Saul king of Israel and so there was the death of a ministry the, the ending of, of an anointing era el, el, la muerte de un ministerio era el fin de un, un unción because of his, his his obeying or, or following God's will his own way por desear de, de as, uh, uh, Seguir la voluntad de Dios, pero de su manera. That's, that's not how it works. Yeah, eso no es como, como trabaja. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read, go back to where we started. Vamos a regresar donde empezamos. Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremías capítulo 3. Um, Jeremiah 3. And I'm just going to continue where, where I was. Voy a continuar en Jeremías 3. Um, when we were talking about Israel and Judah and the, the prostitution, the, you know, seeking other, other idols. Um, and again, I'm just going to read the English. No más voy a leer en inglés. Pero regresamos a, a Jeremías, donde hablábamos de Israel y Judá, donde ta, eran prostitutas y buscando uh, um, otros um, uh, ídolos. Verse 12, verse 12. It says, therefore, go and give this message to Israel. This is what the Lord says. O Israel, my faithless people, come home to me again, for I am merciful. I will not be angry with you forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. Admit that you rebelled against the Lord your God and committed adultery against him. By worshiping idols under every green tree. Confess that you have refused to listen to my voice. I the Lord have spoken. Return home you wayward children says the Lord. For I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. One from this town. Two from that family. From wherever you were scattered. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding and, and this is this is important this is key and, and we're going to have other other messages connected to it it is es, es una clave bien importante where the lord is asking his people to to come back to him in true repentance donde el señor le está pidiendo gente que vengan en arrepentimiento and saying he's going to restore everything to them y está diciendo que va a restaurar todos a ellos and then he says and I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding and he's saying that I will provide people I will provide guides I will provide support for you you are not walking this faith by yourself just trying to figure it out I will send people, humans, who are, who are committed to me, who will provide for you a word and guidance 
for when you're unsure, for when you're going the wrong way, when you need correction, when you need to be disciplined, when you need to be told, hey, that might not be the best thing to do. God's going to provide that. And it's not because there's people that have it all together. It's because we have a God who knows that we need that support. We need that person to walk with us. We all need that. Todos necesitamos eso. Todos necesitamos una persona que, que nos va a guiar, que nos va a disciplinar, que nos va a corregir, que nos va a um, animar. No, to, el Señor sabe que, que tenemos esa necesidad dentro de nosotros. So él, él va a darnos pastores que nos van a... Dice... Y les daré pastores conforme a mi propio corazón, que los guiarán con conocimiento y entendimiento. And so these are not um, people to idolize, but they are um, people that God will use to reveal His purposes and what He desires to do in our lives. And we need to be grateful to the Lord for, for the people of God that He brings into our life. And we need to recognize that, that it's God's mercy that brings that into our lives. Tenemos que reconocer que es la misericordia de Dios que nos trae gente de Dios a nuestras vidas. And I'm not just talking about the pastor. No, no nomás estoy hablando nomás del pastor. Um, that's part of it. It's part of this. But God pastors us through parents, through other um, people of God that we look up to. Dios es pa nos pastorea, no nomás por el pastor, pero también hay gente, uh, nuestros um, pa padres, uh, gente que respetamos en la fe. Um, but, but God sends people. Pero Dios sí manda gente. To, to speak His word into our lives, que, que van a hablar la palabra de Dios a nuestras vidas. And sometimes we won't agree or like it. En veces no vamos a estar de acuerdo o no nos va a gustar. And that's God wanting to get us back in line. Es Dios que quiere ponernos para atrás en línea. Amen. And verso 16, it says, and when your land is once more filled with people, says the Lord, you will no longer wish for the good old days when you possess the ark of the Lord's covenant. You will not miss those days or even remember them. And there will be no need to rebuild the ark. In that day, Jerusalem will be known as the throne of the Lord. All nations will come there to honor the Lord. They will no longer stubbornly follow their own evil desires. In those days, the people of Judah and Israel will return together from exile in the north, and they will return to the land I gave your ancestors as an inheritance forever. Hallelujah. And so it's saying that they're not going to, we're not going to, we'll, we'll if we will accept God's correction and we will walk in, in, in His purposes, not in our way, but in His way, that we will be so fulfilled that we're not going to be thinking about, oh, if things were the way they used to be, or oh, if things were like this, or oh, if things were like that. We will be so fulfilled that we will be in the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> these will be the good old. These will be the days of experiencing the presence of God. Dice la palabra que si si recibimos recibimos la colección de Dios, si recibimos su voluntad a su manera y caminamos en eso, ya no vamos a estar pensando ah eh, había un tiempo cuando eran las cosas mejores o o a lo mejor a un tiempo van a ser mejores. Ya no vamos a estar esperando algo o o pensando como antes era, pero vamos a estar tan llenos de, de, de del Señor que que van a ser los días que esperábamos. Vamos a estar en la gloria del Señor en, en el presente. We will be in our present day when we're able to walk in obedience to God's will according to His way. Este, vamos a estar en esa gloria cuando podemos uh, caminar en la voluntad de Dios a su manera. Amen. Amen. And so we need to embrace the altar as a place of death. Tenemos que, que aceptar el altar como un lugar de, de muerte and, and, and to be willing to allow God to do His will. 
y permitir a Dios que haga su voluntad. Whether we understand it or not, aunque lo entendemos o no. But, but it's not about going against yourself, no es de ir contra ti mismo. It's about um, yielding to your faith and not to your flesh. Es de rendirte a tu fe y no a tu carne. Amen. Amen. Let me close this in prayer. Voy a cerrar en, en oración. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your word. Señor, te damos gracias por tu palabra. Father, I pray that we would be able to receive it, Lord God. To embrace it, Lord. Señor, pido que podamos recibir tu palabra. Te aceptarlo, Señor, en nuestros corazones. That we would walk in your ways para caminar en tus maneras. To walk in, in, by, on your purposes. To uh, caminar de acuerdo a tus propósitos. That the blessing of God would come into our homes. Que la bendición de Dios venga a nuestros hogares. And that our families would be blessed, Lord God. Que nuestras familias sean bendecidas, Señor. Because we're walking, Lord, according to a way way that pleases you, porque caminamos, Señor, en una manera que te agrada a ti, Señor, that you receive all the glory that you do, que recibas toda la gloria que mereces, all the glory in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our families, en nuestras casas, en, en nuestros hogares, en nuestras familias, that, all, that you be exalted, the name of Jesus be lifted up, que el nombre de Jesucristo sea exaltado más que cualquier otra cosa, more than any other thing. In Jesus' name we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I do feel that we're going we're gonna to kind of continue with a, with a similar, um, um, not really a series, but, but kind of the same um, topic um, next week, and so um, welcome you to, to um, receive this and to, to be open to what, what God has for us. Este, sí, espero que el Señor va a continuar a hablarnos so, sobre este tema, más o menos so esperamos que la otra semana regresen y estemos listos para recibir al Señor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we are dismissed. Estamos despedidos. If anybody needs prayer, uh, we're here to pray. Uh, si alguien necesita oración, por favor, vengan adelante y oramos con ustedes. But thank you all. Gracias. Hallelujah.